welcome back to the Lock Around the Clock for the 2013 season. Let's kick it off for week one. The reason you're here is because you've been here the last couple of years. Last year, we were blistering 67% against the spread, which is why you're back. And we're going to look to repeat that again this year and do even better for you. So cheers to the opening game of the season. Now, tonight, tonight's game, we got the Broncos and the Ravens, the return of the Ravens to the Broncos uh, field for the championship rematch, if you want to call it that. They're two different teams, though, especially defensively. Uh, Ray Lewis, for the first time, not being out on the field for the Ravens. Also on the defensive side for the Broncos, they're missing Von Miller, Champ Bailey, as if that mattered. Um, look for these two teams to light it up. Peyton Manning, with the addition of Wes Welker, is going to have another weapon out there with Double Decker and also with Demarius Thomas and new additions like Monty Ball to be able to go out there and put up some points and to put some points up quickly on a very fast tempo and moving offense. Uh, also, with the Baltimore Ravens, look for them to use uh, Ray Rice on the backfield, and we know how he is once he gets in the open space. Uh, Bernard Pierce will be there. They're going to be able to do some really good things on offense against the Broncos. It could start off a little slow, but trust me, folks, the number is sitting at 48.5 right now. Let's go with the over for that first lock of the season. Let's hit the over, whack it tonight, go over the 48.5. On to Sunday for the 1 o'clock lock. We got the Tampa Bay Bucks going to visit the Jets. And um, <laughs> believe it or not, the, the best quarterback here is going to be the team, the, the, the player that wins, which is Josh Freeman, which is on the Bucks, believe it or not. And that's only because the Jets are so horrible. And uh, Geno Smith, I don't know if he's ready. I don't think he's ready. But I'll tell you what, right now, with the best offensive weapons, you got the best offensive weapons on the Tampa Bay side with Doug Martin, with Mike Williams. Um, they're going to be able to exploit this weak, anemic uh, Jets defense. The Jets' offense, obviously, I don't think is going to produce anything. And Darryl Rivas or Darrell Rivas, rather, coming back to play his old team. Look for him to light things up against that anemic offense with Bilal Powell. Uh, I, I just don't see the Jets doing anything here. Uh, Tampa Bay is not going cross-country. They're just heading north. They're going to be playing the Jets in Giants Stadium or MetLife Stadium, whatever you want to call it, but they're laying three and a half. Take Tampa Bay. This could be their game of the year. They're going to blow the Jets out. Take the minus the three. It's the one o'clock lock. On to the four o'clock lock. Um... We have a couple games, uh, only two games for 4 o'clock lock. Uh, San Fran and Green Bay, which we're going to kind of stay away from. We're going to look at the Arizona game against St. Louis. St. Louis is laying three points in this game. St. Louis is at home. This is a Jeff Fisher team with probably the most underrated defense. And they're underrated because they're in the division with San Fran and Seattle, who have the best defenses in the NFL. But look for this team, as you've seen already marks of them uh, in the preseason, being very aggressive on defense. And also last year, you look at the takeaways that they had. Look for this game to go out of hand for the Arizona Cardinals. Carson Palmer's there. It's the best quarterback they've had in a while. But Carson Palmer does one good thing. He turns the ball over, even in games that they're in, even games that they don't have to turn the ball over. He is very good at turning the ball over, especially against a defense like this. Look for Sam Bradford and company with the addition of Tavon Austin to be able to go downfield, passing happy. Dowell Richardson's going to light it up as he's a fresh new set of legs behind that offensive line. Look for the Rams to take that game. That's your 4 o'clock lock. On to the 8 o'clock lock, which is happening at 8.30. Uh, the Cowboys and the Giants are going to kick things off again at 8.30 for that Sunday night we couldn't wait for. In this game here, the total is 48.5. We're looking at the total going over. I think Eli, even though both of these teams are, are touted for their defense, those defenses are going to kind of cancel each other out. We know what Romo does. We know Romo puts up yardage. He knows he puts up points. Eli's going to do the same, at least as long as Hakeem Nix is healthy, which may be for only this game. Um, take a look at the over. We're going to go over the 48.5 in the 8.30 game, the 8 o'clock lock, uh, Giants and Cowboys. Now, on to Monday night. We have a doubleheader. We're going to give you one of the two games. Uh, and this is a special week where you're going to get five games out of me. Uh, we're going to go 5-0. and oh. Opening game, Monday night, first Monday night game, we got the Redskins taking on the Philadelphia Eagles. These teams here are going to have the ability to put up a lot of points as well. Uh, if you notice, I'm going with a lot of totals. And there's a reason for it. Uh, watching the Redskins are going to have a healthy RG3, at least as much as we know. Uh, and what's good about that is it doesn't even matter if he's completely healthy. Um, they have the better offense, and they have an offense that's going against a very weak defense. Uh, we just heard today, uh, Thursday, uh, uh, September 5th, about the whole thing with Riley Cooper and, and – uh, 
uh, Williams getting their cornerback getting into it in practice. Um, Michael Vick was the voice of reason there. Uh, I'm surprised Michael Vick didn't say, hey, let's go back to my house, go down to the basement, we'll settle it there, <laughs> dogfight fashion. But I love the total in this game, 51 and a half. Uh, the, the, the Eagles, as you saw their defense last year, was just horrendous. And the Redskins should be able to run the ball with Alfred Morris. They should be able to get the ball downfield with Pierre Garçon because the defensive backs for Eagles, they're, they're horrible. Also, the Eagles, I think with this Chip Kelly offense, it's yet to be seen, but I got to believe they're going to be able to move the ball against this Washington defense and put up at least 20 points. The total's 51 and a half. I see the Redskins putting up 35 in this game. Take the over. Take it to the book. Take it to the bank. And until week two, you take it ace. <laughs>